My name is Bria. Today, I'm making the long seven hour trip from Yellowknife to the shores of the Liard River. And I'm looking forward to learning some new wild recipes from some old friends. I grew up in Nahanny Butte, so Sue's place here was a place we'd always stop kind of when we were going back and forth out of Nahanny. And it's just a really, you know, kind of memorable place from my childhood. Uh, my name is Sue Lindbergh. I've lived here mm -hmm. since 1978. So we were going to maybe be making some chick chickweed pesto, I believe? Yes. And will we still be able to do that with the cold weather yesterday? Oh yeah, chickweed doesn't care. Yeah? What cold There's... weather yesterday? Well, last night it was down to zero, wasn't it? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not the first time. Okay. Oh yeah, the chickweed's out there. That'll be fun. That'll be really fun. <laughs> Before Sue and I tackle the chickweed pesto, I head over to visit Mary Caroline in her little trapper's cabin. My name is Mary Caroline and I've been staying at Lindbergh Landing off and on for about four years and uh, I just love it here. It's uh, seven hours from Yellowknife so it's hard to get out here but I have a beautiful little cabin that I stay at. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good, it's lovely in here. I know. Are you having a nice visit so far? Oh, it's been great. It's so good to be back. How's Sue? Sue is amazing as usual. Good. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're here. Did you want to, you know, go out and harvest some wild edibles? For sure. I'm so ready. <laughs> okay, cool. I, I was going to make a, a wild rose hip cranberry chutney. Okay. Um, so the first thing we need to do, we actually have to go out and find the rose hips and the cranberries. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um, so I have this really nice berry basket um, that came from Fort Liard. So if you wanted to use that to get the rose hips, yeah. and I'll go get the cranberries. All right, let's do it. Okay, great. I've harvested wild edibles a little bit when I was a child, kind of picking berries and different things, um, especially at the school in Nahanny, because that was part of the education system there. It's been a while though, so I'm really happy for this opportunity to kind of get back to that now that I'm older. Okay, so right here we have the two things we need, which is rose hips, and I'll let you get those. And actually, because it frosted already, they're a little mushier, and they're actually going to be sweeter too, so... It's kind of the perfect time of year. So I know you're just gonna like pull it off the stem. And you can leave the tail on if you want. We'll pull them off later. Okay, is it better to leave it on? Uh, you don't have to worry about it right now and it might put less juice into your berry basket. So I would just okay. leave them on and it's sure. faster. So <laughs> less time in the bugs. We can do it in the cabin later. Sounds um, good. So I'll put those in there. And then I'm just going to get the high bush cranberries, which are these guys. And I recently learned they're not even actually cranberries. The high bush cranberries. Yeah, but they taste like them. It'll do the trick. Um, so I'll, I'll collect the cranberries and you get the rose hips. And uh, maybe about half fill your basket if you can. Okay. But that should be enough, I think. And I'll probably close to fill this bowl. I like just picking the berries. I like kind of just wandering through the woods and, and doing that, the chance to be outdoors and, and prepping things. And I really like the fact that we got so much from the land and and so much of it ourselves. Well, I think we've got enough berries here. You've got a nice little stash of rose hips in here and I've got my cranberries. Perfect. Yeah. All right, so the first thing we need to do is wash them because there's bugs and twigs and stuff in here. Um, I don't have plumbing at my cabin, so I get water from a, a well down the road. So I'll just grab some of that, because I know it's tested and it's clean, so that's the water we'll use for food preparation. Sure. If we have to do things twice or we use a little bit too much washing it, that's a big deal because we have to go through the whole process of going to get more water. Okay, so we're gonna start boiling these down with uh, one cup of water, and we'll see what that does. And then if we need two cups, we'll add, but we'll just kind of play it by ear. But basically what we want to do is boil all the juice and flavor out of the cranberries. So whatever the water is left is really the main thing that's gonna add flavor to this recipe. Okay, so while that's boiling, I think we'll start working on the rose hips. 
I think I think I can see the work already that we're going to need. Yeah, to do. so it's a bit more work because we have to pull the tails off. Um, so we'll just start separating them, uh, and I'll get another container to put the the good berries in, and then we'll sure. put the tails over here, and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. So, but how long do these boil for? Um, I would say bring it to a rolling boil for about ten minutes. But it'll you'll see it'll bubble right up, and uh, we want the water will be sort of pink. Um, and that'll be a good indication that a lot of those flavors and juices have come out. This is an old, yeah, for making applesauce. I remember when I was a kid, we used to use these all the time back in Ontario. So basically, you're just going to smush it through. See how it's all coming out there? Okay. Yeah. Any hints? <laughs> oh no, is it? It's like I, there'll come a point where you can't smush any more out, you know. So I'm gonna get a small mason jar and actually save some of this juice with that leftover cranberry juice. Where I see, I read that you can use it in baking. So I think it'd be really nice to actually make some bannock. I'm gonna try making it on a stick and cooking it over a fire, which I've never actually done before. So it could be fun. Okay. Gave it a quick rinse. It's all going in the same recipe. Uh, how are the rose hips looking? I think they're looking pretty good. They look like they're losing their color a little bit, like the other ones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that looks so good. Yeah. Great. And they're smelling great too. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. This is perfect. This kind of appealed to the inner child in me too, this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even the sound is like, if I was a kid, I'd be like, oh yeah, right? it's gooey. The reason why, I know we're making a chutney and it doesn't look like a lot, but we're now we're going to soak apples and zucchini overnight in these juices and in vinegar. Um, and so those will really absorb the flavors and that will be like the bulk of the chutney. If anyone at home is trying to follow along, four apples and one small zucchini. Or three quarters of a big <laughs> zucchini. Well, uh, using the zucchini was actually Sue's idea. She said it would probably absorb the flavor just as well as the apples. So I've made this recipe once before and it tasted great with the zucchini and also we can grow zucchini locally here so it's kind of an added bonus of using that instead of all apples. So now we're going to let it soak in vinegar overnight with the juice. So if you want to add the juice and the pulp from the fruit in with the apples and the zucchini, we're just going to add two cups of apple cider vinegar. Okay. Um, and that will sit for just overnight. So we got one cup. And we'll throw in a second one. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't take long at all. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'll see you back here tomorrow and we'll finish this up. Great. Okay, and of course we'll have our fire tonight. We'll make some bannock. I'm so excited for tonight's campfire. But first, I'm going to go see Sue and learn how to make pesto from wild chickweed. What are we going to be doing here? We're, we're just going to gather a cup and a half. Okay. Tightly packed of this stuff. And this is chickweed? That's chickweed. There probably isn't a garden around that doesn't have chickweed, but I think you probably find it in, in meadows too, because when the bison come to visit, I'm sure they leave some seeds behind. And uh, it's, it's an edible plant. There's lots of it. Um, it's not hard to get, and it tastes good. When we were harvesting the chickweed, it was really interesting that it's just kind of a wild edible that not a lot of people in the north seem to really take advantage of. We may as well be weeding the garden at the same time, hey? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So are these too big, the ones that I got? Do you want smaller leaves? No. It's the, we don't want big stems. But big leaves are okay. Now we're gonna get some arugula as well. Okay. Yeah, you put it in salads and stuff. It's just a green. This one's almost a little more bitter, but not as strong tasting, if that makes sense. Oh. You don't think so? I didn't try the other one. Mm -hmm. It was pretty sweet, the other one. But was it? Oh, yeah. good. You want to try it? It was, I, I'm not sure which plant it came off of. 
guess it all depends, eh? There are three kinds of arugula out there. Oh. <laughs> well, then it might not be the same. <laughs> now we have to wash it. And you're just going to dump it in. All this in there? Yep. Really? Yep. Just dump it in. <laughs> I'm so worried about it sinking here if it doesn't go float. Oh, yeah. It's an honor to learn from someone like Sue, obviously, um, she's so wise and she has so much experience and is so patient and I love that. We probably shouldn't call it pesto oh. because there's no basil in it and pesto actually is basil. So while we're doing this, think of a name for it. <laughs> You're putting all the pressure on me. Now we have to get a cup and a half of this packed tightly. So it doesn't matter if we get little stems like that. Yeah. But uh, we'll yeah, just big ones. throw them in. Oh, oh. Let's get the arugula in there first. Make sure we've got that in there. So I'll have to get back to you on the name for this recipe. Maybe we can try to think of it for the dinner. <laughs> oh, good on. Right? Yeah, right on. So what inspired you to come up with this recipe? I've got lots of chickweed. <laughs> Making use of what, with what you have? Well, you see, it starts early in the spring. And if you're growing basil, you don't really have enough, at least I don't usually have enough basil until later on in the summer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make this sort of thing, then you, you go with what you got. What do you think? Oh, um, it's looking like I'd yeah. say I'd say we've got a cup and a half there. Yep. Well, that's a nice big one. Mm -hmm. The more garlic, the better. Okay. Um, half a cup of pine nuts. <laughs> there we go. Half a teaspoon of, I'll just call it salt. Half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Now we have to process this mm -hmm. and then after it's all mushy we put that in. All right. So we have to go to the porch because you need AC for, so for we're this thing. We're still being energy efficient. We're running off solar now. I get my power mostly from batteries and the power is provided by solar panels and stored in the batteries. The house is wired for AC and DC. And uh, if, I need, if I need a lot of power for some reason or other, then I just put on my generator. Okay, I think we can put the rest of it in, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I think it's fluid enough now. Wow. Okay. A half a cup of freshly grated parmesan, wouldn't that be nice? Mm. Everything's better with cheese. Here we go, that's half a cup. Now, there are some biscuits over in that cupboard. Why don't you get some and we'll, we'll spread a little bit on and see what we've got. <laughs> I'm not sure yet what we should call it, but the fresh chickweed was delicious. Those are really good, I really mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. The chickweed and arugula pesto is such a neat idea. I see Mary Caroline has the fire going at the picnic shelter. Time to make some bannock. Well, let's, uh, let's give this bannock a shot. I just uh, learned last week how to make bannock, so it's very new to me, but uh, I read that you can add this cranberry juice that we got earlier from the chutney and it will, um, you know, add flavor and I'm sure color. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. Um, so we have to start with three cups of flour. Maybe I'll let you get those going. Sure. So now we just need um, three teaspoons of baking powder. I can put those in. And one tablespoon of sugar. Um, okay, so just stir up all our dry ingredients. Oh, and a little salt too. Probably finer ground salt would be better, but 
you know, we're out in the middle of nowhere and this is what I have for salt, so. <laughs> really stir it up there. I'm sure you've had some bannock in your day, having grown up in the north. Definitely. It's never as good as when the elders make it though. I haven't come across it yet. We'll try. <laughs> no, I'm not old enough to make it bannock. <laughs> Maybe like half in, I think, just to start to kind of mix it in, you know. Let's see from there how we're doing. Okay, so we used all of our, our juice. We almost could have used more, I guess. I thought I thought it would be enough to have a cup, but uh, throw in a little regular old water. Did you want to knead the dough? I can too if you want. However, okay. you need more flour? I think basically just keep adding flour and water until you get the right consistency. Yeah. I'm gonna try kneading it at that point. It's been nice and soft too, actually, right now, as long as I don't need it too much. Okay, great. Well, uh, let's get a stick and see if we can get this to work. And uh, we can always fry it in lard in the Dutch oven yeah. too. <laughs> it's going with the flow. A little bit of both. A little afternoon fun at the homestead. Maybe yeah, Sue, Sue will come and help us. She might, yeah, that. she might give us some advice here. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, we <laughs> need your help. <laughs> Is okay. this the consistency we want? <laughs> oh, I think that'll. I think sure it'll that'll wrap around. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. I think so. Yeah. Okay, great. You want to help us cook some bannock? Okay. All right, good. Pretty goopy. Yeah. It's a little <laughs> come on now. <laughs> Did we not put enough flour? <laughs> come on now. You know that we, looks like a good idea. We'll oh wow! See, eh? We'll see. <laughs> Priya, <laughs> you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so Sue, we put cranberry juice in, but I don't think we put enough in. But we'll see when we eat it if it tastes like cranberries. So that kind of that was great fun, and it tasted good. However, I think there was supposed to be a hint of cranberry in there, and I didn't notice it. But the butter, the butter on it, made it. Quite presentable. This is a step up from what I had. Oh, I, I like, like yours. Too. I did I like yours. But this one's good too. Mm. I think the more butter you add, <laughs> surprisingly, it tastes better. <laughs> the, more, the more butter on the inside and the less black on the outside. <laughs> Sun sets on the Liard River, and I'm ready for bed. What a long day. And I know there's still work to be done in the morning on Mary Caroline's rosehip chutney. All right, so it's next morning. Got our food sitting overnight. I have great news. I smashed my finger at the water pump. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to do all the cooking. So there's a, a hand pump well. Um, just part of the day-to-day -day life of being off-grid out here. Uh, unfortunately, I smashed my finger between the pump and the well and uh, got a big blue bruise <laughs> on my finger. So that, that wasn't great. You know, there's, there's physical demands being out here, and sometimes psychologically it's a little challenging to be in such a remote area. But at the end of the day, I think it, it makes me a stronger person, and, and I really am grateful to live out here. So um, the first thing we're going to do is just put all the ingredients together, and then we're going to boil it down. So there's a big saucepan there. All right. We'll mix in the, uh, the day-old... It's uh, all soaked up. I don't know if you can smell the vinegar in it. Kind of vinegary. That's not a little vinegary yet. You said that'll take about a month to. Um, sit yeah, in the once it all mixes and, and boils down, it's good to have it sit for a month. And yeah. And that'll get rid of some of the kind of vinegary. Yeah, yeah. It'll acidity. sort of break things down. And... Okay. Okay, so we've got half a pound of brown sugar between these two containers. You can plunk those in. And half a pound of raisins. And two tablespoons of freshly grated ginger. Okay, and then we're gonna take uh, probably four of these seeds. What kind of seeds are these? These are cardamom. We're taking five cardamom pods. Basically, you'll use a knife to like squish them open, okay. and the seeds will pop out. And then you'll put the seeds in here and grind them up. 
It is smelling quite strong. Though. Yeah. In a nice way, though. Like, doesn't it remind me of Christmas? I don't know why. It reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Let's imagine a moose roast. Some nice rose hip chutney on top. It's going to be good. Should be pretty good. So just dump that in the pot. We need the, uh, the juice from one lemon and the zest of half a lemon. I love the smell of fresh lemon. And now it's grating. Unfortunately not locally grown, but... <laughs> <laughs> so we're just doing half a tablespoon of chili sauce. Just add a little kick. That's everything we need. Now we just need to boil it down into a chutney. So this could take quite a while. I just put yeah. a new cylinder of propane on the stove. <laughs> so uh, we'll light up the stove and then uh, we're going to boil it down to a point where if you scrape the spoon along the bottom, it won't fill in right away. So that's how thick. We oh, want wow. It to that's be. really thick. Okay. So yeah, this is going to take a little while. So uh, maybe we'll go. Well, we have to keep stirring it continuously, <laughs> but uh, good to maybe. Have a friend over for tea and chat while you stir up the chutney. It might take a, um, even up to an hour to get it down to the thickness that we need. Okay. It's really close. You can see how even when you pull it on the bottom, you can still see the pan for a little bit. But we want it just a little bit thicker than that. Okay, I think the water's ready for the cans. And how's your chutney looking? You're looking great, ready to go. I think uh, if you pull the spoon across the middle. So we're just going to plop the jars into the water. Sterilize them. And actually you can probably take the heat off on yours when right. it's done. Throw the lids in. They'll seal as long as they're hot enough, like if they're boiled. Then the temperature change will seal them. Okay, so just take the chutney, and uh, if you can, you're going to scoop it into the jars. I'm really excited about the preserving things. Uh, I really like that idea of, you know, it not requiring a lot of energy afterward, you know, cans that can stay on the shelf for so long. And they're being, you know, not full of preservatives and full of local healthy things. Yeah. Clean towel to clear off the rims and then... I always have a hard time with this because <laughs> it's really a little awkward getting the lids out. Touch the edges, but you don't want to touch anything that's going to be on the inside of the jar. Because the germs from your fingers can get into the thing. Okay. You just loosely screw it on. I think it's going to be the perfect amount. Yeah, great. on and then we'll wait a month <laughs> but I, uh, yeah yeah but I did make some the other day so we uh it was only about two weeks ago so it might be a little tart still but we'll try it out tomorrow night at Sue's when we all have dinner well it's my last night at the homestead Sue and I head to the garden to get produce for tonight's dinner with the help of a root cellar and preserves Sue is able to live off her garden year round which is necessary when the closest grocery store is over a hundred kilometers away. Are we gonna cube them? 
Well, we're just gonna put them in chunks. Okay. Yeah. You know, we're all off grid here and uh, just to have like a huge garden in the north and to have root cellars and to know how to make preserves and live off the land. Um, she's a very unique woman and so it's it's just been an incredible life experience to come down here and, and learn from Sue. Well, I might start making bannock. You guys cut that up. Have it with our dessert. So, how was your drive? It's good. Good. Yeah. Saw some bison. Oh, did you? You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, no. How close? Pretty close. Like, they were just on the side of the road. So. Oh, man. Oh, Sue, should we bring over the turkey left? Sure. Good plan. Yeah. And, uh... Now, we decided that perhaps we shouldn't call it pesto because pesto is supposed to be basil. <laughs> it looks good. This is uh, what uh, Sue and I were working on the other day, so it's a uh, chickweed, kind of almost a pesto type idea, but instead of with basil, it's made with chickweed and arugula. Oh, it's so fresh. Okay, cheers to the trugula. Cheers! Trugula! Absolutely! <laughs> Seems like in the north, the best meals are shared with friends. We all work together to prepare the feast with food from the land. More guests begin arriving from the surrounding area. Right. If this is dry, the potatoes are just steamed, so they're dry. You need you need something. We should make gravy. Okay we're making yeah. those. So oh, yeah. Probably what we have tonight was provided by by my neighbor. The neighbors are always very good about passing along meat when they have it, and they let me cut it up myself so I can cut it the way I want it and use it for what I want it. <laughs> With the exception of the bannock, everything we are eating tonight was harvested within one kilometer of the homestead. Oh, tonight's dinner was wonderful. All those things that you provided, like your chutney and your your syrup, and, <laughs> and well, the moose is always good. Okay, well, cheers, guys. Thanks yeah, for absolutely. coming to dinner and Sorry. making this all possible. Oh, cheers, cheers. 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 All your hard work. Yeah. I'm gonna miss some people. <laughs> I'm really happy that I was able to come here and, and learn how to cook and harvest, even if it was just for a couple days. Mm -hmm.